And specifically what I mean by that is when the government, whether at the state or local level, has not required or mandated a behavior, how how can we encourage that as a business community? And so I'm so thrilled to hear what Vanessa is going to talk about and what you all are rolling out because that's such such an incredible program. And then I'm, I want to be cognizant of time because I think I'm just... <laughs> Give me a cue, Valerie, if I'm if I need to cut off. I want to share maybe one more thing and then cut me off. Um, a couple of the key tips that I would give for businesses that we have really encouraged. Uh, I have three or four. So utilize utilize all resources. Resources that you think you have or you don't have. You know, call your local health department. Call your hospitals, call your advocacy associations, your chamber members, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I'm the, the goodwill and I think the information sharing right now, I think, you know, organizations that you may not have previously identified as an ally for you are more than willing to share information. And um, number two, make a plan and continually update it. Everything is fluid. Uh, number three, communicate, communicate communicate with your with your staff with your workforce with your clients and customers communicate with your elected officials you you may not realize the, the impact and the power that your voice has right now but it has more of an impact than it ever has and here's here's another interesting thing I would say encourage your elected officials to communicate with one another because we've seen um, at times in our state when our governor and our mayor haven't been communicating or when our regional mayors that make up northeastern Oklahoma and what we call the Tulsa region haven't necessarily been communicating. And so from an you know, from my advocacy world, that that's one of the most important things that we can do is also encourage our elected officials to con continue to communicate with one another. So, again, our, our biggest lessons learned are be kind and be useful, and you've got to respond, reassess, and reinvent. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, it's, it's wonderful to hear all of the things that you're doing, how quickly you jumped into action, and talk about a perfect storm. I, I, there were at least four things converging there, only one of them positive um, at the time, which is that Tesla, you know, winning the, the Tesla plant moving into your area, but then three other major challenges. And I, I, what a perfect storm and that you that you are navigating there. Um, it, we spoke earlier and um, it's interesting that Elizabeth's chamber is 80 percent small businesses, just like ours is, um, although they have, I don't know, uh, maybe. 4,000 more members than we do, <laughs> um, but that's okay. They're in an urban community and we are not. So, um, but again, the lifeblood of, of economic development and our business communities is small business. And those are the ones that are most at risk right now. And so um, it's, it's great to hear how you're trying to help your businesses. And it, it's also great to hear how symbiotic that is with what we've been doing with our businesses as well. And you should know that Jen Stevens, who's, you know, our communications manager here on staff, has been the lifeblood of just getting the information, synthesizing the information, as you've said. It comes in like a fire hose, doesn't it? And you got to get it back out again. And Jen has been the person that's been doing that for us. So kudos to Jen and kudos to you for making that happen as well, Elizabeth. So we're going to hold off on questions for another moment or two and, and uh, bring on Vanessa so that she can share with us, um, as you can hear, a totally related subject, which is let's keep us healthy uh, because healthy people make healthy businesses and healthy economies. And the best way to do that is to wear a mask, wash your hands, stay six feet apart and social distance and don't hang out in groups. And um, I actually attended a, a session this morning with uh, Dr. Fauci from the United Chambers of Commerce. I don't know if you saw that, Elizabeth. Um, the um, the um, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and uh, th that was it. That was pretty much his message. You know, there are a lot of other things that he said, but uh, the bottom line is: mask, hands, six feet, 
and stay away from large groups. I mean, that's what's going to do this. So, Vanessa, let me introduce Vanessa. She's the Vice President of Communications for the New Hampshire Hospital Association, which leads advocacy and public health communication strategies on behalf of New Hampshire's hospitals. Today, she's going to be speaking with us about Mask Up New Hampshire, a statewide collaborative effort that aims to keep New Hampshire healthy and open. We like both of those by highlighting the importance of wearing masks in public and engaging in other infection prevention measures to help reduce the community spread of COVID-19. Take it away, Vanessa. Thank you, Valerie. I'm, uh, uh, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of this. We're really excited to get this up and off the ground um, and it's doing so with the traction of a train. Um, so bear with us as we get everything in line. Um, but we wanted to talk about uh, Mask Up New Hampshire. So as part of a collaborative effort to limit the spread of COVID-19 across the state and uh, like Valerie said, keep New Hampshire healthy and open, my organization, the Hospital Association, had joined with a few others to kind of brainstorm and um, see what we could do to encourage the use of face masks in public uh, and work settings. And so we got together with um, the BIA, with the Medical Society, um, and a few others who have, who have signed on um, to kind of launch the initiative, Mask Up New Hampshire, which uh, is done, being done in collaboration with, but also strengthens the efforts of those led by the Common Man family and the Rotary Clubs of New Hampshire um, uh, by helping to raise awareness around the importance of wearing masks, but in how doing so, along with other perfect, uh, invention, uh, prevention measures like hand washing, practicing social distancing and staying home when we're sick um, can reduce the community transmission of, of COVID-19. So Mask Up NH, I think um, everyone is, is aware of that and we're acting as an extension um, of that team we're working in collaboration with Alex Ray as well as um, Steve Rand who's with the Plymouth Rotary Club and the one that's been partnering with Alex um, to really get that off the ground. But that's their their focus was more around um, the distribution of masks and making sure that people in the community had masks to wear. Um, so again, we could keep New Hampshire healthy. But what we're aiming to do is really launch an education campaign um, uh, um, that, that aligns more with boots on the ground and grassroots so that we can help share all of this messaging um, through a variety of different channels and target a, a bunch of different audiences. If um, the, the campaign itself, we're, we're working in collaboration with the Department of Health and Human Services as well. And so the, the campaign aims to amplify the messaging that they're already putting out there. Um, they've been doing a, a great job um, in the governor's press conferences, through their updates uh, on their social media channels to share information um, about these very, uh, these very um, efforts that we can take uh, and as well as CDC information as well. And so all of the messaging that we're including in, in our um, campaign toolkit, if you will, um, amplifies those messages. Um, it also aims to eliminate the misconception of not having to wear your mask because New Hampshire is opening. If we're gonna keep, if we're gonna remain open, then we all need to practice a little due diligence. Um, and the other um, important takeaway that we want people to have is that wearing a mask shouldn't be and isn't a political statement. It's, it's the importance is um, on the public health issue that we face with regard to COVID-19, as well as an economic health issue um, that all of our businesses and communities face. And so if we wanna keep our state healthy and our economy open, um, we, we need to mask up. There's still a lot we don't know about COVID-19, but we do know that wearing a mask is one of the most simple and effective ways that we can um, reduce the risk of exposure to and the community transmission of. COVID-19, and it's also a visible way to demonstrate, as we've learned very quickly, um, you know, uh, your, your personal level of concern and responsibility um, for others, and it's, it's a really simple way that everyone can help out. Um, all of us have a responsibility to take part in, uh, in engaging in these measures um, so that we know that we can keep not only our state, but as the state opens and we're welcoming, um, you know, fellow neighbors, we want to make sure that we're keeping them healthy and safe as well and that they're doing so by us. And so the campaign itself, Mask Up New Hampshire, launches on Monday. Um, there's, a, there's a larger PR effort that's going on, but like we said, we, th we feel that we're going to get um, the biggest impact from the grassroots efforts. So we're really encouraging everyone to participate in this. 
Um, there's a, a, we developed a campaign toolkit that I will walk through um, in a, a couple of minutes just to show you some of the graphics and, and what it looks like. Um, but that there's a variety of different assets in the toolkit that will help people, uh, that will easily engage people and help them participate, you know, just by plugging a graphic and posting some content that we have in there. So we've, we've created a number of different tools um, to help our boot, so to make it easier for everyone to participate. And that will be available for download. Um, we will have a website um, that, again, will be linked with maskupnh.com. Um, the website is going to be maskupnewhampshire.com. Um, so similarities. And like I, I said, I mentioned train. Um, so take that with a grain of salt because we're looking to launch the, the website later on this afternoon. Um, uh, and if not, then this weekend. Um, and so what I can do is share my screen just to show you some of... Um, the graphics and what we'll, what we put together for folks um, with regard to campaign uh, assets. And so everything is, um, you know, targeting uh, together, we can keep New Hampshire healthy. Um, we this is the actual toolkit itself, so I'm not going to read all this, but we explain the goal, how people can help. Um, we're looking to carry this out through the summer and then into the fall and longer if necessary. We really want to leverage um, a lot of uh, you know, community support, business support, organizations. Um, these are the elements that we have within the toolkit that anybody would be able to use to announce their participation, engage their local media, print and radio. Um, there's a social media toolkit that they can use, suggested hashtags that we like to provide. And then again, connection with our channels, other ways that they can support. So we have all of this um, readily available. And then these are just some of the items that we created. There's a letter to the editor that will be going out on Monday, a press release template, like I said, to announce participation, op-eds. Um, there's email signatures that if organizations choose to participate, they can easily um, load, uh, put these into their email signatures to demonstrate their support for the campaign um, and uh, their support for everyone to mask up. Um, we developed Facebook frames that people can use. Um, social media graphics. So all of the branding you'll see is designed to be, um, all of the graphics are designed to be brand neutral. So if somebody would like to put their logo on it, that's absolutely fine. But um, they're, they're okay to, um, they're designed to, to live on their own as well. And this is one of the most important messages that we have throughout the, the campaign um, to help eliminate that confusion over wearing masks and, and, and how do they help. Um, so again, just being kind to our neighbors. Washing our hands, we focus on those. Um, staying six feet away, social distancing, which is not what my neighbors were doing last night. Um, staying, reminding folks to stay home if they're sick. And again, we've we've we wanted to make this as easy as possible for people to get involved. So whether it's launching or joining, um, you know, CDC, DHHS information, all of this is is publicly available and we just captured it from a variety of different resources. Um, so people would feel not only comfortable in the information, but it's got links to um, other resources. And we just wanted folks to be able to cut and paste so that they wouldn't have to think about it in all, at all and they could still be a part of the campaign. And in doing so by tagging um, Mask Up New Hampshire and Keep New Hampshire Healthy, um, those hashtags that we included before. There's um, an FAQ that people can put on their website um, that explains why masks are important and how they help, again, to eliminate that confusion. We have flyers that businesses can download and the state's going to be making available um, through its distribu uh, distribution channels. And again, you know, that talks about, that doesn't focus on the political statement of not wearing a mask, requiring masks. Some organizations are doing so and, and you know, that's, that's, that's great. Um, we have a lot, I'm sure you saw in the media this past weekend with more tourists coming in. We have a lot of um, anxiety, it would seem, around mask requirements, even suggestions to keep, um, you know, fellow shoppers healthy uh, and safe. And so we just tried to create some neutral messaging that would alleviate that, but hopefully engage people in, you know, what we think is a social responsibility. Here's an example, thanks to Jim Roach of the BIA, demonstrating the photo campaign. So we're going to be targeting some key influencers, and we invite everyone to do this as well by showing themselves masking up. Again, canned content that they can just plug and paste um, with the hashtag. So this is just a sample of, of um, you know, what we'd be looking for in, in the photo campaign and we'll be kicking this off on Monday as well. 
And then again, just some information. I can make this available to, to Valerie um, after so that she can uh, send it out to folks if they like. But we really just wanted to make sure that um, people understood the importance of wearing masks. And if we all wear masks regularly when we're in public or even in the work setting, um, doing so in conjunction with those other safety precautions we know work, like hand washing and what have you, that we can all do our part in slowing the spread. Um, we, can, we, we can do our part in protecting our vulnerable loved ones and other citizens and keep New Hampshire healthy and open. Um, I think many would agree that our economy depends on it, our communities depend on it, and our family and loved ones depend on it. And so we encourage you to, to get involved. You're more than welcome to email me for more information. Um, but I'll open it up to questions or turn it back over to Valerie. Thanks so much, Vanessa. This has been, um, I saw this presentation earlier this week and I was blown away by it, and uh, which is why I asked Vanessa to join us today. So um, Vanessa, if you want to, there you go, thank you. Um, uh, and thank you very much for doing that because you know that I couldn't, so. <laughs> Sharing. Happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there are people much more, much more, uh, uh, competent about um, Zoom than, than I certainly. So um, I think that this is the most critical message that we can get out there to our staff, that we are protecting our staff. We have, as employers, a legal and a moral obligation to protect our staff. And so um, <clears throat> for the most part, I've seen that happening around town. Thankful for that. Not entirely, but it's, and it's important that we do that. And one of the reasons, one of the ways that we protect our staff is to ask others to be kind and responsible and protect us as well by wearing masks. So it's just such a critical, um, it's just such a critical initiative that you've undertaken, and I really appreciate you doing that. And many of us don't have the, um, uh, are, I think we'll be thankful for all of the work that you've done to make it so easy for us to adopt. And the fact that we can brand it, we can all brand it, we can brand it by our businesses, by our chambers, by anybody can brand that. So I, it's fabulous. I, I really appreciate that you've done that. So um, the difference between Mask Up New Hampshire and Mask Up NH. Can you just share that one with me, Vanessa? With yes, of course. I um, I explained that a little bit before, but we're we're working in collaboration with. Mask Up NH started as a mass distribution campaign, but um, and it's, you know they 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 got a um, 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 they really used their social media channels to help push that out. Um, but their their goal was to put masks in the hands of people um, very early on, uh, before we even knew what we know now about COVID nineteen, to ensure that people could take part in that responsibility um, when going out to um, the you know the the grocery stores. Uh, anything else. And so this is meant to amplify that. So this is um, this statewide initiative is is essentially a grassroots campaign that will leverage what they've already started, but take it a step further. And so they're working alongside with us. Um, they're, you know, they're they're happy to be involved. And we're going to connect the two websites so that we can try and help eliminate some of that confusion. Um, you know, but part of their concern is if they can't acquire more masks, then their distribution effort is no longer. And so we just didn't want it to go away. Um, we wanted, you know, we wanted to maintain the messaging, um, you know, well into the fall. We don't really know what COVID's going to do. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing what it's being, what, what's happening across the country. Um, we, you know, and if we're going to try to um, reduce that, uh, that, that potential, um, wearing masks is, is you know, a part of, of that. And we just wanted to make sure that, that we maintained, um, um, you know, some sort of, um, we wanted to make sure that it stayed mainstream and that Mask Up New Hampshire didn't go away. Thank you. On a related note, are you aware of any bulk purchasing availability through the state, through anybody for masks? But I know that, I know that the state was giving them out for free and now they're selling them through the liquor stores. Quite frankly, here's a tip, folks. You can get them cheaper at BJ's. Um, but they're still, they're not cheap. So, you know, if we're handing them out by the bucket loads, which I hope we are, that starts to become expensive for some of our, sm particularly our smaller businesses, our retailers and our restaurants. So, um, yes. what do we know? 
Well, I, I can tell you that um, my associate of the New Hampshire Hospital Association has um, um, we work very, we have a sister organization called the Foundation for Healthy Communities. And one of their programs is the state's emergency preparedness coalition that Granite State Healthcare Coalition. And they're working very closely with the state um, and uh, FEMA partners, as well as all of the hospitals across the state on general PPE supplies, not only for hospitals, but also for civilians. Um, I know that there are attempts to, or that, that we're always trying to, we being the, the state and other partners, are always trying to get additional supplies of PPE. Um, it's, we, we, we were in significant, we, we had significant shortages, um, backfilled those and we're in a solid place and now we're experiencing shortages again, but we're not, this is, we're, we're seeing this across the country. And so I know that there's, there are efforts being made to, to um, uh, acquire more face masks. Um, I, but with regard to, making them available free to civilians. I, I, we're, we're currently working with DHHS on that right now to ensure that if Mask Up NH um, and the Common Man family and the Rotary Clubs of New Hampshire's um, effort, if they don't have any more masks, I mean, they put the money up front um, and, and purchase 70,000 masks to get them out there. Um, I think that, you know, if we can find if we can establish that partnership um, with another partner, um, you know, utilizing some of the state supplies to get the masks out through the distribution events that that Mask Up NH is doing, um, you know, that's that's currently what we're working on in the goal. Great, I think I think that's what we're asking for. So if you can just keep us informed, then we will, and by we I mean Jen, will share that <laughs> <laughs> with all of our business community. Um, so Absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 so, it's so critical. We're very lucky here on the Seacoast because we have Seacoast mask makers. I don't even know yes. how many masks they've made. If anybody wants and knows that and can put that in the chat so that we can share that with people. Um, they've made like a gazillion masks and they're handing them out for free and they're, they're, they're just doing an amazing job. I have one right here. On my, you see one right here? Yeah, no, that's a wonderful that's initiative. I am wearing all the time. So thank you, Seacoast mm -hmm. mask makers. So, um, so you know anybody that we can that we can tap into to help the distribution would be would be fantastic. So just keep us posted if you would, and we'll share. Um, Elizabeth, coming back to you, if I may, for a second. Um, one of our major concerns here is a lot of our businesses have said to me, you know, we have had to rehire. State, you know, the PPP they got the PPPs up front. They paid their staff while they weren't open. Now they've dipped into their savings um, and whatever to get opened up again, retraining staff, hiring new staff, training them in all of the sanitation procedures. Um, in many cases, buying furniture to put out in the street um, and, and the fencing and the beautiful plants and lights and all of that to get out on the street and just re, re um, 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 getting their inventory back up, you know, just, their inventory all went away. They donated it all back in March when they closed their restaurants. If they have to shut down again, if we get a surge and they have to shut down again, a number of them have told me, we just don't have the reserves to start back up again. If we have to shut down again, we're done. What have you seen with your business community? Because you've had to move back. You've had to go back to, I'm not sure that you've totally shut down, but you've had to go back a phase or so. So can you share what your business community has felt about that? Do we have you unmuted? Can we unmute her? Um, I'm trying and didn't, and now she's okay. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's such a great question, Valerie, because we're really here in Tulsa at a tipping point right now. Um, we have not implemented any sort of secondary stay at home order or closure order. We, we are at the verge of that right now, essentially. I think policy leaders are debating that. We also don't have any sort of, I, I can't recall if I mentioned this earlier, but we don't have any sort of statewide mask mandate. Just 48 hours ago, we, uh, now have a local mask mandate. And we are working as a chamber really to encourage businesses to, to stand in the gap 
and to do everything they can to encourage safe behavior. I was, I was sitting here jotting notes in my cell phone as Vanessa was talking about this, this excellent advice and this such a great resource that you all have put together. Um, we are really trying to encourage businesses to take advantage of, of every resource like that and really be the champions in the community for modeling that safe behavior because if we if we do not, then we will be faced with a second closure. And the costs right now of providing PPE and to your point, you know, the plexiglass partitions and getting rid of furniture or rearranging furniture and completely changing a lot of your business model and your business practices is incredibly burdensome and incredibly expensive, but it's not as expensive as another closure order that could shut your doors. And so I think as a community where, where, and again, I said, I promised I'd be frank, where I think we could have done a much better job is relating it as a human compassion issue. And I think leaders across the nation from the top to the bottom really need to stop debating the politics Stop debating the science and make it a human compassion issue. Um, I'll protect you. You protect me. And we are really, really struggling with that in our community. We let, as a lot have, we let politics get in the way. And our mayor has done here in Tulsa a fabulous job of of saying, um, you know, mask is not a four-letter word and really modeling the behavior. And so the more that we can encourage businesses to to weigh the risks there and model the safety, safe behavior for, for their own clients and customers. And as a chamber, we have their back. We are doing everything we can. We partnered with Tulsa County to provide free PPE kits to all small businesses within Tulsa County. We were able to take advantage of, again, federal funding, CARES Act funding to provide this. So here in Tulsa, any small business is able to request a kit that has, um, you know, several dozen masks, hand sanitizer, a touchless thermometer. So, you know, it's, it's, we're doing everything we can to provide those day-to-day resources so we can avoid a second, a second closure order. That's interesting. We have a, uh, um, a fund that was started by the mayor uh, and city council called the Clipper Strong Fund for our small businesses. And that's exactly the type of toolkit that they've put together to hand out to our small businesses. So, so there's, there's an awful lot of things that, you know, I, I think your, your chamber and your, certainly your city is so much larger than ours, but I think we all have the same concerns and we're all working along the same lines to, to address them. So that's, that's fantastic to hear. Um, do we have, uh, we do have a question, another question for Vanessa, I believe. Um, how often are recommendations for washing masks? I see people going weeks in the same one. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, for the, for the cloth masks, they, I, I believe the recommendation is to wash them after every use. And so one of the many initiatives that, that was passing out masks was making sure that um, there were two in a kit, per, let's say. So one for the face, one for the washer. Um, for disposable masks, I believe the recommendation is to um, uh, dispose of them after every use and, and um, use a, a new one. So I think that's what I've heard as well. Um, I, I will share that the uh, one of city staff that was on vacation up in, uh, up in Maine took a picture of the visitor center in Bahaba. <laughs> and uh, outside of the visitor center, they had a stand-up uh, post box, mailbox, paper mailbox. And they had plastered a sign on the side of it that said free masks. So you can open up that mailbox and you can get free masks. So yesterday I went out and I bought a couple of uh, mailboxes that are going to go. Um, they're going to be attached to our Market Square kiosk. And uh, we're going to also offer some free masks as soon as you help me find out how to buy them, Vanessa. So <laughs> yeah, our, our hospitals are doing very much the same thing. They, they, you know, their auxilians or 
um, staff, even volunteers. Um, all of our hospitals have gotten donations. Boy Scouts engaged in a statewide effort for care kits that included some masks. So any of the cloth masks that they get, they, they're, they're placing them on tables for individuals who are coming in for appointments and don't have masks. Um, sometimes those are a little bit warmer than the blue paper masks, um, warmer as in compassion, not. Um, um, and then, you know, before you walk out the door, there's a box or a mailbox where uh, the visitors or patients can drop the used masks and they're, you know, taken care of and washed and, and made available so that, you know, there isn't a staff member, there isn't a patient, there isn't, you know, a, a um, um, nutrition services person that isn't wearing a mask. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Many of our businesses, our retail shops, our hotels, uh, our restaurants, uh, if you if you want to come in and you're not wearing a mask, they will hand you one. So um, many of our businesses are are doing that. So I, I see you nodding your head, Elizabeth. They're doing that in Tulsa also is apparently. So do we have any other questions? I'm not seeing any other questions here. I think you both did an amazing job of of uh, giving enough information that we don't have a whole lot of questions here because you've just covered so much. Um, I, I cannot thank you enough for being here, honestly. I, I just think that the messages that both of you had today were so critically important to our business community, um, to, our res to, to our residents, to our entire community on how we're going to stay sta safe and healthy, whether it's personally or from an economic development and business standpoint. Um, your, your information was invaluable. Now, I know that Elizabeth has a very special uh, uh, video for us. You know, we always try to leave on a happy note. You know, we should walk away smiling or dancing or, or laughing or something. And Elizabeth has queued up for us something. And I'll, I'll let you intro it, Elizabeth. But I, I want to say that, you know, we talked about your perfect storm and there was one bright light. And she's brought that bright light to us today. So I appreciate that. So we're going to say um, thank you once again to Elizabeth and Vanessa. And she's going to cue that up if you're going to stay for the entire video. It's not that long, a minute or two, I think. Yeah, just under two minutes. Great. So please stick around for that. And if you have to leave, um, thank you for being here. Have a fabulous weekend. I was just in great weather. And make your reservations for your, res your, your favorite restaurant right now. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks. So, Valerie, as I mentioned, um, we are still in the running for a Tesla vehicle manufacturing plant here, which would just be an incredible boon for our economy right now as we're in, in COVID recovery mode. And I want to share a video that I think does a great job of capturing the spirit of Tulsa and what we're proud to be frontward facing in the midst of a lot of negative news. We're proud of this video. Uh, I'll be, our chamber did not produce this, but it, we're happily marketing it and happily sharing it with Tesla. So thank you again for having me and I will share this video. Thanks Elizabeth. Tulsa. Tulsa is a precocious city. One that has always had more than its share of excitement and danger. That was true when we were a creek settlement, a cow town, and the oil capital of the world. For this place is tailor-made for risk takers. It is a land for people not allergic to hard work are more than willing to take a chance. It has always been the risk takers who have broken through and changed things. They were willing to risk their reputations, relationships, and resources to get the job done. And this road, the mother road, Route 66, is what connected them to the rest of America. A paved ribbon of commerce and adventure that captured Americans' hearts, introducing them to the car and the freedom of the open road. It's a road that now leads to a future of infinite possibilities and in alternative energies. Like Tulsa, it calls to risk takers and visionaries, and nowhere else 
as the road flex its determination, personality, and purpose more than here in our great city. I'd say it's time to embark on a new journey. Love that. Love that. So who, who among us has not been on Route 66? That is, that is like a life, uh, uh, a must-do experience in your lifetime, right? That's on, that should be on everybody's bucket list. So, oh, Vanessa, your son made it. That's great. Nice to meet him. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Uh, Vanessa, Elizabeth, all of you who joined us today, have a fabulous weekend. And please stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye.